Alright, well, I did a bit of an update only a few days ago, really, after I'd made a hell of a lot of the LP. I want to do another update here today, guys, because there was big news. Those following me on streams, those following me on Twitter will already know about this. But uh, I have something pretty exciting to announce to you all. A new opportunity that has opened itself that I've been driving for for a long time. Uh, and there's a few other things to talk about, too. So, first of all, let's just talk about the Let's Play. I don't really know what to say that won't sound somehow fake or shoehorned in, but I'm truly blown away at how much everybody seems to have warmed to it. You would have thought that it would be a bit scary doing a project like that because it's old content, it's 2012, I've, hell, I've even done exactly that once upon a time as a failed thing that most people have been asking me for, and yet yeah, uh, everybody seems to be really excited about it. I did a lot on that series, as you guys will notice, to really try and make it feel fresh and new again. So like most veteran players, most videos you'll watch, most streams you'll watch, most of my stuff you'll watch, everybody plays with like maxed out at field of view. Like the FOV slider is always as high as possible so we get as much peripheral vision as possible. And uh, that's good as a gamer and as a player, but it doesn't really give you a lot of the smaller scale perspective and um, appearances. People always have the camera zoomed out as much as possible as well. You'll notice throughout the LP, I'm really trying to bring it back to like what it was at launch where everything's a bit slower pace and we're okay to have a narrower field of view and we're looking a bit more detailed. And I think that's really paid off. People are actually really enjoying it. So that's great. And I just wanted to say thank you all. Thank you all to the support. I hope that it sustains. The thing with gameplay series like that is like you'll have a nice opening and then everyone kind of gets bored of it over time. And that's fine. And I don't judge people for that. I do that when I watch LPs myself on YouTube. But uh, the question on my mind now is like where we'll actually sustain at say uh, three weeks down the road. How many people are still tuning in on the, the daily episodes as they come out. But it's great and I really am blown away. And I just wanted to thank everyone for uh, all the wonderful feedback and just sort of warm reception to it. The one thing I've noticed a lot of you guys... Uh, might not like if there have been complaints about the series and there aren't really but if there are some complaints it's on one thing and that's that I'm really going back to basics and I'm explaining everything I'm like explaining what a waypoint is I'm explaining what specializations are I'm talking about my builds you haven't even seen it in the episodes just yet but there'll be long chunks of the LP where I talk about like what a minor trait is versus a major trait and what grandmasters are and all you know what runes are what sigils are all those discussions are and will be in the series and if I've had any negative feedback it's people saying hey this is boring I don't like watching this to those guys, I understand that. That's perfectly valid. Uh, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, frankly, I want this series to be the equivalent of my GW1 series in that someone totally new and outside to Guild Wars can come in, watch it, and they'll understand everything about the game. I have a lot of gripes with Corteria, and the way it tutorializes the player base is one of my biggest ones. The game doesn't teach people very well what sigils and runes and things are, how this stuff works. So I want my LP to pick up the slack where the game itself has no ambition to. Uh, and what that means is, frankly, most of you guys listening to me right now and watching this video, you already know that stuff. You're not interested in hearing that. It's going to bore you, but you're kind of not my demo. And that's the risk I'm taking, right, that I mentioned before. And so I get it. There will be a lot more comments like that as time goes forward. People will say, oh, God, can you stop explaining all this stuff? But uh, it's kind of what I want the series to be. And uh, as it goes along, right, it's going to be a lot of episodes. By the time we're like 30, 40 episodes in, that stuff will be gone, right? And the rest of it will be smooth sailing and we'll all be caught up. But I do feel like those explanations need to be in there at least once for, you know, uh, random Joe Blogs that might watch this series in 2021 and he doesn't know anything about Guild Wars. I'm doing it for Joe. I'm not doing it for probably you guys listening to me right now. But anyway, uh, yeah, that's great and I just wanted to say thank you everyone and I hope that um, you continue to enjoy watching it. They're really, really, really fun to make, I have to say. And uh, I'm going to keep churning them out nice and quick. Uh, also, another note, as a disclaimer I gave before, the LPs are not replacing other videos, like this one or videos on other aspects of Guild Wars. Uh, so let's talk about that. That's the next thing I want to get into. Uh, I wanted to do a video on a new forum initiative that ArenaNet are doing called the AFCs. I have mentioned this already. Uh, if you've been out of the loop, though, you know how they do the big Reddit developer celebrations, the AMAs? Well, they're doing equivalent ones monthly over on the forums. Uh, and the idea is that they'll talk about like some contemporary patch, right? So the first AFC did come out on the forums um, And I wanted to do a video. Like, why wouldn't I do a video? It should be just like doing the AMAs But honestly guys, it's not very good. I'm pretty disappointed with the AFC now I don't want to make a whole video purely saying that 
but it's like they didn't really pick too many interesting questions. I don't think the community asked too many interesting questions. The quantity was a lot lower than I expected. It seemed like, okay, there were a few devs that really deep dived into it. And there are some incredible responses. Uh, particularly some of the walls of text delivered by one of the devs, Jessica Price. Oh my god, she does amazing. She's like a god walking amongst mere mortals. It's incredible. Uh, and there are some good contributions from the devs in there. But overall, is it meaty enough for me to do a video on all on its own? I'm not sure. I'll leave a link in the description if you guys want to go check that AFC out. But I'm not sure how I want to deliver that to you right now. Because it was a lot less interesting than I was hoping. There is another thing that I missed as well though. And that's Guild Chat. Uh, apparently there have been some really cool insights from Guild Chat, the Arena Net live streams. I find myself constantly missing those. So if you see like a newsy type video, you might find that I do an AFC Guild Chat recap sum up thing rolled into one. I might start working on that tomorrow morning actually. So that's basically what's going on there. And I just wanted to let you guys know that the AFC did happen and that's kind of what I'm thinking about right now. I'm curious, what did you guys make of the AFC? Did you forget about it? I wonder if it's because most people forgot about it. Hmm. Well anyway, so there you go. Um, now, let's get into the uh, the big news, the big thing that I really want to talk about here today uh, that people on Twitter will have already seen. So, if you guys know this about me, for the past, especially a year, but before that as well, frankly, uh, I have wanted to read the Guild Wars 2 novels. So, there are three novels. There's Ghost of Ascalon, which is set just before the core game. There's um, Edge of Destiny which uh, is set five years before the core game. And then there's Sea of Sorrows, which is set like a hundred years before the core game. All right, three novels, three separate stories. They're all really interesting windows and insights into Tyria. Two of the novels came out before the game itself. The third one came out after the game itself. They're different authors that write them. They're fascinating. They're really good. Um, I've read all of them, but I didn't finish one of them. But I'm really excited about these uh, novels. Every time I consider, hey, I want to read them privately, uh, and sort of reimmerse myself into Guild Wars. Uh, I think to myself, wouldn't it be cool to be able to read them out online? And you guys know I have a passion for, uh, to a very li lesser extent, voice acting, but delivering that kind of stuff. Those who are subbed to one of my other channels, Concrete Ducks, will know I was and still am enthusiastic about that stuff. Uh, and so I've basically been pressuring and pushing ArenaNet and NCSoft for a long time. Hey, can I get permission to read the books? Can I get permission to read the books? Essentially, I want to read them and deliver them to you on YouTube. Like, even maybe commentate on them, Let's Play style, but the books themselves. This is something I'm really excited about. I know it might sound really dry and bland and boring to you guys, but the way that a book can express this universe, this setting, this fantasy world, versus how a video game can, is amazing. I mean, I'm sure we've all got experiences of having read a series of novels and then seeing the film adaptation. It's kind of similar with Guild Wars. The novels give you this really rich, imagination fueled version of Tyria that the game will never be able to reach. And there's real talent that's gone into these books, and there's really good stuff to draw out from them. And I want to share that with you all. I'm a fan. I'm a huge nerd of this franchise. I want to share it with you all. So I've been pushing and pushing and pushing, but there are problems with this. I'm not the first person to have had this dream, this dream of reading the books. Um, other people have done it, and they've just winged it and put it online. But here's the thing. It's not really like, if you, if you read the book out loud online, it's not necessarily a transformative work. It's a grey area at the best of times when we deal with these kinds of things on YouTube. Um, and uh, basically run into copyright issues. People who have tried to read these publicly online have had their videos pulled. Um, and it's not, oh, a reader is the devil, they don't want people doing it. But it's the simple fact that um, copyright laws are a little bit more well defined when it comes to like literally copy pasting novels okay but also uh, there's a lot more companies involved in this than just arena net and just ncsoft like there's actual book publishers there's pocket star books there's the authors to consider there's loads of stuff going on right so uh it's been complicated it's been tied up in legal and whatnot uh, they haven't it, it's not that there's evil people at arena net who just don't like you sharing their stuff they're actually really good people constantly ask me hey can i use arena net's music in my videos and stuff and they're always really good about this stuff but the books are like a special case so anyone who's ever tried to do this before have had their stuff ripped off of youtube and i've never dared and i've known that i'm not generally allowed uh, so the only way to get through is to directly go to them and try and set up some kind of special arrangement where I can do it. And uh, it's taken a long, long time, but they've been fighting in my corner for this. They've been working hard at this and I got confirmation, uh, just yesterday, yesterday morning, I got confirmation via email that I am allowed to do it, which is Awesome! Super badass! I'm extremely thrilled by this. I am under various stipulations and criteria. Like, I can't paywall it. There are certain things I can't do. 
um, and I have to be careful of. At any time, they can ask me to pull it if, if, if that's deemed necessary. Um, so there are certain like aspects to this that I, I wouldn't be allowed to uh, mess about with. But it means that I can be the true Guild Wars nerd I have always wanted to be and read these books to you guys. So this is really exciting. Some of you are listening to me right now and you're thinking, oh my god, is that really very good? It is good, guys, and I'll tell you why it's good. First of all, what an amazing supplementary series to the Let's Play. Okay, so you're going to be hearing in the Let's Play all about these characters, Ritlock and Logan and Zodja. And the Let's Play, you will see over these next episodes if you watched it. The game constantly refers to their previous exploits around the world, but it never directly explains it, not well enough. And when it finally does skirt around the topic, it doesn't go into any real detail, but it's always in your face. Or what happened to Snaf? What happened between Ritlock and um, Logan, especially in the early story? Constantly. You never get a really satisfying payoff. The novel, one of the novels, deals exactly with that. So what a cool, cool, cool uh, companion to the uh, LP. Hey, here's another thing, right? Ignore the LP for a second. One of the reasons I've always wanted to do this, okay, is when I say um, do, uh, you know, a, a crack in the ice sum up story video on, on YouTube for the current story. When I do that, it's kind of like we, the Wooden Potatoes community, get together, get together as a little club. And we talk about that patch, don't we? We talk about all the little specifics of Bram looking um, in the cave and how he treated us and how the commander treated us and was he really like a Norn or not. And uh, we did, we look at how the Sons of Svarnir interacted in this little moment, in this chapter of the story. It's like we're a little book club almost. Well, that's what we'll have when I read these stories out, guys. What I'm going to do is one chapter per video. Uh, so there's a lot for me to figure out. I'll get into more details here. But every time you see one of those videos, you get to uh, click on it, and you don't just get to hear me reading it out to you. Audiobooks of this have never existed, by the way, so this will be the first form of that you get to hear. Um, you get to listen to me read it, or you can just go away with the video entirely, read it on your own, and go to the comments, go to the subreddit, go to the uh, Discord, go to my upcoming Twitch streams, and we all will have, as a community, just read, listened to that chapter together, and we get to chat about these events in a way that has never existed, right? Like, I've been ingrained in the Guild Wars community for a long time. Even when these books first released, you'd have, like, a big thread on Guild Wars 2 Guru or the forums or whatever. Where people talk about the book as a whole, right? And everyone gives their impressions and their review of a book as, as a whole. But everyone's reading it at a different pace. Some people finish it in the first day. Other people take the time with it. Um, everyone comes at it from different backgrounds and understandings and things. And the discussion doesn't really get that deep on Nitty Gritty. It will here because we're going to have a weekly book club basic glow going on. I don't know whether I'll title it that. Where we get to look in at these really, really, really cool chapters. So if you're still not convinced, by the way, I did do a prototype run of this to see whether I could really pull this off on a stream yesterday. I will play you a clip now of a little bit what it might be like the eventual videos. Listen to this. This is the start of Sea of Sorrows. Not anything spoilery. It's the very beginning of the first chapter. Let's go. Not me. I was very, very quiet. And Mama let me sleep. There was a pause. This time. A breath he hadn't known he'd been holding eased out of Kabaya's lungs. Good girl. His hair lay against hers along the curve of his shoulder, matching like two skeins of the same thread. It was probably a good thing that Vivian couldn't see his expression, for it took him several moments to get it under his control. At last, with infinite care, he lowered his sister to the ground. Here, he forced a happy smile onto his lips. With a wink, Kabaya drew a silver coin from his pocket. He held it up, giving it a flourish so that the metal sparked in the sun. Do you know where I got this? Vivian clutched her dolly close to her chest and opened her rosebud mouth with awe. She shook her head, eyes wide, staring at the money. Kabaya let the coin dance over his fingers. See those big masts out of the last dock? That's the indomitable. She's got three masts and three decks and a hundred guns on each side. The King of Kryta built that ship himself, and she's one of the finest on the sea. Vivian stared out over his arm, glancing back and forth between the white sails and yellow gold. That's King Bade's ship? His biggest one. And it's a sight to see. It could fit a hundred soldiers in it. And it would still have room for 15 houses, a thousand cats. He smiled to see her mouth purse into a little O of astonishment. And Paula too. Wow, her eyes were big and trusting. And you were on that ship? I was. I was helping to load it last night. And while I was putting a crate in the hold, I looked out of the porthole at sea. Do you know what I saw there? Kabaya leaned in close and whispered into Vivian's ear. A mermaid. The little girl's blue eyes grew wide as china plates. A 
real one. Interesting simile used there, by the way, by Reese Sosby. Um, the little girl's blue eyes grew as wide as china plates. All right. So, right. Now, I'm not... Obviously, I'm not a professional audiobook creator. Uh, I'm not a professional voice actor. I, you know, but this is a talent that I'd kind of like to hone. So this will be really cool. This will be a learning experience for me as I go through, as I get better, as we go through all of this subject material. And we get to really dive a lot deeper into Tyr. I think you guys will find that uh, you have a lot more fun out of the lore and the world building here. So, uh, so yeah, I'm really excited about this. This is going to be going on as well. In addition to the LP, it's just been thrust upon me, but I definitely want to take advantage of it nice and quick. So there's a lot of questions on how uh, I actually handle this that I still don't have answered. Like, what kind of footage do I want in the background? Someone tweeted me um, just this morning and said, hey, can you do... Um, uh, captions. So they're basically asking me to translate the three books and make sure captions up. Stuff like that I've got to figure out, like exactly what format I want to do. But these are the things I'm settled on, okay? Number one, we're going to do one chapter per video. And that means each video I anticipate will be between half an hour and 40 minutes. Or 40 minutes to an hour. One of those, right? So it'll be like a normal wooden potatoes length video, frankly. But you'll get one chapter and we're going to do a chapter a week. Okay, so we'll go through like that. Now, here's the funny thing. There's like 27 chapters in Ghost of Ascalon. There's like 40 chapters in Sea of Sorrows. There's like 37 chapters in Edge of Destiny. I'm actually such a nerd that I just pulled those off the top of my head, and I think I'm right about that. But anyway, there's a lot of chapters. If you add all of that up, what you'll realize is if we do one chapter a week, that I've just signed on to like a two-year project. And I think that's a dangerous, terrible, silly thing for me to do. I'm not going to sign on to a two-year project. That's insane. And I feel like at some point in those two years, I'm, I'm going to let you down. So I don't want to do that. I want to get through it a bit quicker. So what we're actually going to do to counter this is we're going to borrow from the geniuses behind 1990s Star Trek. Okay? So, because I'm <laughs> very much into Trek at the moment. I think this is genuinely a good idea. Back, and if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, back in the 90s, you could tune in and watch The Next Generation. But then, just after The Next Generation ended, an episode of Deep Space Nine would come on. Which is the same franchise, the same world, the same setting, but you're dealing with a different cast of characters at a different location. Okay? And then, when The Next Generation ended... You could do the same between Deep Space Nine and Voyager. And you got to juggle these two shows about the same setting you loved at the same time. And that's what I'm going to do with the books. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with Ghost of Ascalon. But while doing Ghost of Ascalon, one chapter a week, we will also do one chapter a week of Sea of Sorrows, which is the longest book. Then when Ghost of Ascalon ends, which it will much before Sea of Sorrows does, we will swap ghosts for Edge of Destiny. So we will have book clubs. It will be one chapter a week, but you get to enjoy more than one book as the week goes by. And if that sounds overly complicated and difficult to follow, trust me, you should respect your intelligence more than that. You'll be able to handle it just fine. And this way, I'm not signing on for a multiple year long project. I'm signing on for like a 40 week project, which we can definitely do. Uh, so there's that. That's, that's what I absolutely want to do. Um, we'll pick a day of the week and it will be like, you know, like... Wednesdays. I don't, I don't know what day it will be, but we'll pick a day of the week where you can tune into Wooden Potatoes and you get to sit down uh, in the in the afternoon and you get to enjoy, uh, you know, listening to chapters of these two shows you enjoy. It's going to be really good, all right? So there's that. Then there's another side of things, and it's um, commentary. So I can almost guarantee that those of you listening to me right now are split in half in the room. Half of you are going to be wanting me to not just read the book, because maybe you've read it before, Maybe you don't respect the idea of me simply, you know, reading out loud, basically putting in another form something that already exists. Uh, you don't want me to just read the book. You want me to comment on it as well. You want me to, to point out that Re has a simile early on in the book, uh, and she refers to China, China plates. And how can we talk about China plates when we're talking about Tyria where China doesn't exist? You want me to do random little comments and things like that. That's half of you. The other half of you want a straight up audiobook. You've never heard the novels before. Um, or maybe you have, but you want to listen to this in your car, on your way in and out of work, and you don't want like little random interjections from the guy reading the book. So there's two very different audiences here, and it is fairly split. So uh, here's how I want to handle it. I'm going to do the actual video itself that you watch will have no fluffy commentary around it. It won't have, hi guys, welcome to another video, blah, blah, blah stuff, and cool, that was awesome, let's see you next time. It won't have that. It will be raw, professional, audiobook style um, audio that runs through a chapter, okay? And it says chapter one, blah, 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 and we go through. However, 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 we can have our cake and eat it too. 
Some of you might remember about a year ago, I did an event where we uh, got 150 people to map cap Queensdale. And we got them all on new free-to-play accounts. We got them all in original starter gear, all on new characters. And we ran out throughout Queensdale and um, we recorded it. And I made a video where I had just the raw audio on there. I didn't have anything else. I didn't have any commentary. I just wanted to pro pro provide a rich, pure, raw experience of what Queensdale is like back at launch, essentially. Um, and I didn't want to tamper with the audio anyway. I wanted it to be a pure experience. So uh, what I did on that video is we had the raw audio going and in the comment in the description Sorry, I had a link to my SoundCloud Where basically I had a super long video description that I read to you out loud on SoundCloud So what you're listening to right now, maybe some of you are all tabbed It was this experience of just listening to my voice as I described the video, but it was separate to the video itself Okay, that format, that structure, I actually really like and I haven't utilized very much. We will do it for this project. So here to sum it all up, you're going to click the video. It will be the video itself will be some pretty background. It'll be some ambient noise. It will be the chapters, the stories. But then if you want extra commentary, if you want my thoughts on the chapter itself, you want my book club impressions in the description, you just click a link and it's like you've been sent to another video where you can just hear me chatting about the chapter itself. And uh, I give you my feedback and my thoughts and my impressions just after I've read it. So that way we get to have our cake and eat it too. You can get the commentary stuff, you get the book club, then also you get the whole community's reaction and discussion about that chapter too. And uh, we get that. So one chapter a week. And then once you've enjoyed hearing the adventures of Dougal in Ghosts of Ascalon as he plunders the Ascalon catacombs, half an hour later, episode the next episode comes on and we're hanging out with Kabaya Mariner in the Sea of Sorrows or, or whatever is going on at the time. It's going to be great, guys. So that's the idea. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm really, really excited. It will be a great compliment to the LP. And there you go. That's that's the update, really. That's what's uh, happening. That's the, the tidal wave of new fun stuff that hit me uh, this morning. And now I just basically need to get to work, iron a couple more things out, and that's it. It's going to be a bit before I start, by the way, guys. So if anyone listens to a lot of audiobooks, maybe you're a big fan of a certain audiobook style, like reader. It, uh, basically, market research for me, if you will. Uh, if anyone has a particular style or sound of audiobook that you think sounds really good, can you give me your recommendations in the comments? And I will listen either to those audiobooks in full or snippets of them uh, to see whether maybe that's what I should go for when I'm doing these. Because I want it to sound good. Um, and so, yeah, if there's anything that you guys think sounds particularly great that would match me well, uh, I'd like to hear that. This update video isn't over, though. Two more things I want to talk about. Number one is still related to the novels. <laughs> um... So like I say, I'm not particularly a talented guy, and uh, Sea of Sorrows has uh, something kind of interesting as a part of it. It has a song, it has a sea shanty that is delivered and sung at various parts of the book. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm seeking to hone my talents in some respects, but one thing I think I'm very far away from is being a musician, being an artist. So I don't actually know how best, while I'm reading these novels, to take that song and make it sound good. So we had a fun idea yesterday on the stream that I thought I'd roll with. Uh, I decided to make a competition out of it. So I'm offering a bounty to the community here to actually turn these lyrics that we have in the book into a song. So here you can see it on screen. Um, I've got a bounty. Uh, there's a link to this in the description if you guys want to see it. I'm offering 800 gems to one of you. Any of you could win these 800 gems. Easy, easy 800 gems. Fun to make as well. Uh, sea of Sorrows features a song fairly prominently as the chapters progress. It only exists in text form, however, and here's how it reads. Yeah, so like, because there's never actually been an audio book, because Ree has never sang the song, the author of the book, Ree Sosby, she's never sang the song. We as a community don't actually know how this should sound, right? But we have the text of it. It's called Weather the Storm, it's a Tyrian sea shanty, and it reads, You don't know the storm till you ride the wind beneath the cold and blackened skies, oh. Till you're sailing through a thunderhead with the lightning in your eyes. Death, he laughs, the sails and the jags and the bloody sun went rise. And it goes on, right? So it's it's not a very long song, but it's a sea shanty. I don't know how this is supposed to sound. So this bounty is for you to translate this into an actual tune. Uh, so note, you don't need to be good at singing or a particularly talented musician. You really don't. Just act as an artist and turn these words into a melody that sounds good and the reward is yours. And then what I'll do is whoever wins the competition, I will then emulate 
like the, the tune that they have created when I read the novel, if that makes sense. Uh, because I think it will sound really boring if when I'm doing this project, I just bluntly read it out. I do. It's supposed to be a song, right? So let's make it a song. So this could be kind of fun to see. Uh, maybe no one will submit for this prize and this is just a waste of time. But I thought I'd throw it up just in case anybody wants to try. Um, in the event that multiple people submit something, uh, I will listen to them on stream and I'll select the one that uh, we as a community think sounds best. Uh, and yeah, you can, it's very easy to submit. You can just make the song or, you know, sing it out however you think it should sound in a good way. How does a sea shanty sound? That's up to you to interpret. And uh, just just then give it to me, right? It can be a YouTube video. It can be on your SoundCloud. It can be a Twitch VOD. It can be direct download from a Google Drive, whatever. Just let me hear the audio. And then, yeah, we'll do that. Uh, two notes as well. If you do something really professional and you're interested in it, we could just use your exceptionally good rendition of the shanty in the book themselves. I could just edit it in. As long as it sounds really good and professional, who knows? And then also, no, if there is any information out there at all from how Ree Sosby, the author, intended this to sound, or if you can get that information from her, then you'll pretty much just automatically win and we'll go with the author's intent, right? Uh, deadline for this bounty is in 14 days, so two weeks. I want to start reading these. I want to get this underway. So um, I'll give you two weeks to submit it, and I'll be working on Ghost of Ascalon in the meantime. So April 3rd. April 3rd is your deadline. I also have another little thing here as well, by the way. I don't remember what other songs, chants, or poems that the novels contain. So it's been quite a few years since I read them. Uh, if anyone puts in the legwork to point out any other songs so we could do other competitions as they get closer, as the other chapters come along, or potential roadblocks we might hit, then you can get 400 gems yourself. If you've just read the books, if you know more of that, give me the information. Literally just type to me, Reddit, twi uh, Twitter message, Discord message, anything. I'll give you 400 gems. Pretty simple. And there's no deadline for that bounty, obviously. So there you go. Uh, that's uh, that, that's the situation, guys, really. So that's one. And then finally, to end this update video off, just uh, so that you guys know, I haven't advertised it at all. For the past three weeks now, I've been doing almost daily PvP commentary casted videos on various PvP builds because I'm loving PvP at the moment. Conquest is a lot of fun. Most of you listening to me talking to this won't be interested at all, but trust me, it's a pretty good series and... Um, Basically, everyone who's watching it on Wooden Potatoes 2 is hating that I'm not advertising it on my main channel. So here it is, guys. Everybody says it's good. Go watch it. Tell me what you think, and uh, we'll see how it goes. That's, that's going up all the time. In fact, I just posted one of those videos just before I'm making this one here, and you probably didn't even know about it. So there you go, guys. Again, returning to the start. Thank you very much for all the lovely feedback with the LP. I'm really excited to have so many projects and fun things going on, and um, I hope to continue delivering for you all. It's really invigorating. Thanks, everybody. I hope you enjoy, and I'll see you soon.